Hey there, it's Anne here from Zevo Health. I'm going to be chatting to you today about stress and anxiety management. And we're going to be talking about the definitions of stress and anxiety, how they feature in mental health, the difference between the two and the stats on them in Ireland and Europe. We're also going to be talking about the symptoms of stress and anxiety, what happens in the body, why it happens in the body. We're going to talk about the relationship between stress and anxiety and the inner critic and how to manage them going forward. So the definition of anxiety is a feeling of worry, nervousness or unease about something with an uncertain outcome. So when it comes to mental health and anxiety, it brings in these feelings of nervousness and unease with certain compulsions and often panic attacks. So the stats on anxiety are, it's the most common mental health issue in both Ireland and Europe and it's up there with cancer and heart disease with regard to how it can affect your life. One in nine people can suffer from anxiety at one point in their lives. It's not age specific and it can present itself along with other mental health issues. So there are a couple of differences between stress and anxiety. Stress can be seen as a temporary thing focused on a particular issue in somebody's life and anxiety is a more sustained feeling and is harder to pin down. Another way of explaining it is stress is the reaction to a problem and anxiety is the reaction to the stress. So when we suffer from stress and anxiety, the body produces stress hormones that causes physiological changes in the body. So there are quite a number of overlaps between the symptoms of stress and anxiety. None of them are an enjoyable situation, so we're going to look at them as a whole and see how you can deal with them going forward. So why do we feel stressed and anxious? Well, it's the body's response to perceived threat or danger. In other words, fight or flight. And this is a phrase that you might have heard a lot, but we're gonna go into it a bit more deeper here. So the brain hasn't evolved over time to differentiate between psychological threat and physical threat. So when we feel these feelings of stress and anxiety, the body thinks that we're in danger, so it kicks in, it activates certain parts to get us moving, to fight off the opponent that we need to get away from, or to flee a situation that we're in. A part of the body called the sympathetic nervous system kicks in and it activates different parts of the body that need to be activated to get us out of threat and out of danger. So when fight or flight is activated in the body, your pupils dilate, your skin can get flushed or pale, your breathing gets quicker, your heart rate increases, your blood pressure increases, you can feel yourself shaking, your digestive system slows down, and these are ways of the body to protect you and get you moving, get you fighting or flying away. So a special mention must be given to other ways that the body can protect you aside from fight or flight. And these are known as freeze or fawn. Freeze, it does exactly what it says in the tin. You freeze, you play dead. This is the body's way of optimizing the best way of survival in a threatening situation. Fawn can be seen as social engagement or interacting with the threat or the danger in order to lessen the threat. So 
So there is such a thing as good stress in your life as well. If you have something coming up that you need to get energized for, you need the adrenaline running, like you have an exam coming up, maybe a big presentation in work, a big match, maybe you're taking your driving test and you need to get activated in order to perform at your best. But when is stress and anxiety bad? Well, it's bad when it's limiting your life, and that could be limiting your levels of confidence, limiting your life experiences, or even in a work situation, limiting your opportunities going forward. So now we're gonna move on to anxiety and its relationship to our inner critic. Just take a moment and think about how you speak to yourself in your own head. What's your inner dialogue like? Is it mostly positive or is it mostly negative? I would hazard a guess and say that it's mostly negative. The inner critic has a lot to do with our anxiety levels, both day to day and in our lives in general. So if you can imagine giving yourself a positive message once a day for a week, what kind of an effect would that have on you at the end of the week? It would have a rise in confidence, no doubt. So if you're talking to yourself in a negative manner, nonstop, day in, day out for years, this is bound to have an effect on your stress and anxiety levels. And there can be different types of inner critic that we suffer through every day in our lives. They come in different forms. Some of them can be catastrophizing situations. Basically, that's going to worst case scenario straight away and thinking of the worst when the most likely situation is probably very, very different. Another example of a negative self-critic is blaming. Blaming yourself for everything, taking the responsibility for everything that goes wrong when the reality is very, very different most likely. Another example is rehashing situations and this is ruminating on the past and we all know that there's nothing you can do to change the past but we still rake through it and try to see ways that we can be blamed or that we could change things in the future. And another example of self-talk is rehearsing. So looking into the future and as we know nobody can predict the future so we can practice as much as we want conversations in the shower, conversations in the car and you can never change what's happening. You just have to to trust yourself in the moment that you'll be able to deal with things the best way that you can. And a negative self-critic in your head, day in, day out, can have serious effects on your life. It can affect your confidence, it can affect your self-esteem, it can affect how you see yourself within your own environment, within your own world, and it can affect your self-worth going forward as well. So it's a good thing to look at it and see, is this a negative thing that's coming in that I can change, or is this really a realistic view of my life? So now we're going to look at tips and tricks on how to manage stress and anxiety. First of all, if we look at meditation and mindfulness, there's simple things you can do there to work on anxious feelings. You can do a body scan, which is simply going through different parts of your body, focusing on them, seeing how they feel, and then moving on to the next part. And what this does, it gives you a focus, it grounds you, it brings you back to the present tense, and it brings you out of that overwhelming anxious feeling. Also, you can do a simple little thing like slowing down your breathing. And it might seem too good to be true, but really, when we slow down our breathing for a few minutes, we activate the parasympathetic nervous system. And that's what's known as the rest and digest system, as opposed to the fight or flight system. So this can bring you back to ground and just give you a little time to breathe and see where you are, take you away from the anxiety and take you away from the stress. So another way to manage stress and anxiety is to look at what the most likely situation is. And within this, we look at the three R's, which are being reflective, being rational, and being realistic. So within this, we're not looking at overly positive situations. We're not trying to ignore any information. We're just trying to look at the situation as how it is. So for example, if you're sitting at home and you're waiting for your partner to come home, an hour has passed, there's no sign of them, and you're thinking, my God, they've been knocked down by a bus, they've left me, something crazy has happened and your mind goes into overdrive. 
If you could take a little breath and say to yourself, what is the most likely situation here? So if you're reflective, you look back on previous situations, maybe they're busy in work, maybe they have a deadline, maybe they've been held back an hour the last week. So if you be rational about it, be rational and say, I'm in a loving situation, they're not gonna leave me, they're safe, they'll get home the normal way they usually do. And be realistic, take into account the context of the situation, where you are, what the pressures are, what the deadlines are, and what could be the most likely situation given all the information that you have. Another way to manage anxiety and stress is similar to the previous one, which is looking at what the evidence is of the situation. So this would be, again, taking a realistic point of view as to what's going on without spiraling off into worst case scenario situations. So let's take a little example here. You're going for a promotion at work and you have to go for an interview. Your anxious mind kicks in, starts telling you, I can't do this, I'm gonna make a fool of myself, I'm gonna fail the interview, I'm not gonna get the promotion. Whereas really, if you stop, take a minute and say to yourself, what's the evidence here that I'm gonna make all these mistakes and not get the promotion? Look at the work you've done up to now, look at the prep you've put in for the interview, look at the relationships you've built up in work and go from there. Don't just spiral off without coming back to reality. So another way to manage stress and anxiety is to focus on somebody in your life that you have a deep relationship with and think about how you would speak to them if they were in a similar situation. So if you can take a moment now and picture somebody in your mind, a loved one, maybe it's a good friend, a partner, maybe it's a daughter or a son, or maybe it's somebody that you have a good connection with that you can trust and you feel comfortable with. Next thing to do is picture them coming to you with the same situation that you're in, coming to you with the same anxieties, the same levels of stress. Think about what you would say to them. Think about how you would treat them. Even think about the tone of voice that you would have when you would speak to them. Think about the care that you would give them and then try and turn that love and care and support on yourself. This can take a little bit of practice because it can feel odd at the start but as we all know practice makes perfect and it's worth the go. So another great way to manage stress and anxiety is to really focus the body and ground yourself. And a good technique on how to do this is to look at the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 technique. Basically, we take into account the five senses and we get in touch with them one by one. So if you're sitting in a room now, think about five things that you can see around you. Maybe you see a door, maybe you see a plant, maybe you see a window. Name them, think about them, see how they look in your mind and really focus on them one by one. Next, take four things that you can hear. Maybe you can hear birds around you, traffic, whatever it is, take them into account, focus on them one by one. And continue on in this way where you take three things that you can touch. Really value the texture and move forward one by one with those. And then think about two things that you can smell. Maybe you can smell fumes from outside in the street, maybe you can smell coffee being made in the kitchen. And then take one thing that you can taste. Savour that taste, focus on how it feels in your mouth and really give yourself the time to focus on that. All of these things will ground yourself in the moment. Lastly, another way to manage stress and anxiety is to keep an account of it. And that would be through having an anxiety journal. So this could be anything really. It could be things that spark your anxiety and stress, situations that you find yourself in that make you anxious or stressed, or different times of the month where you find yourself more stressed or more anxious, really taking the time to write down how they feel. And it's a good reference point as well to look back and see these situations that have caused stress and anxiety and how you can change them if possible moving forward. So 
So here are some takeaways that you can use going forward when you're managing stress and anxiety. First of all, remember that stress and anxiety is the body's way of protecting you. It's a natural bodily response. And so it's important to understand that and move forward with that knowledge. It can work in some situations, adrenaline can lift and it can really make you perform to your best. So when it's bad, it's limiting in your life. It's limiting your confidence, it's limiting your opportunities and it's limiting your experiences. And when this happens, this is a time to look at it going forward. So consistency is key when you're managing stress and anxiety. No habit is gonna be changed overnight. So if you can put something in a routine, work at it, you should see results. And also, it's important to remember, you're allowed to feel like this. You're allowed to feel stressed and anxious. It's a natural thing and it always passes. And it's important to look after yourself instead of letting the self-critic take over and being hard on yourself. And lastly, one small change can make a big difference going forward. It might not seem likely, but just try it and see. Hope you enjoyed it and hope something works for your stress and anxiety management.